Oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right. OJ. OJ. I am going to read three chapters. Three. So if you have to leave, that is fine. If you can't stay for the whole time, but I missed three days. So. All right. Can you guys mute for me? Okay. All right. Here is the picture for chapter twenty-three. Alrighty. Okay. Exceedingly well made. Oh, sorry. Okay. Exceedingly well made, said the man who was running a warm cloth over Edward's face. A work of art, I would say. A surpassingly, unbelievably dirty work of art, but art nonetheless. And dirt can be dealt with, just as your broken head has been dealt with. Edward looked into the eyes of the man. Ah, there you are, the man said. I can see that you're listening now. Your head was broken. I fixed it. I brought you back from the world of the dead. My heart, thought Edward, my heart is broken. No, no, no need to thank me, the man said. It's my job quite literally. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lucius Clark, doll mender. Your head, may I tell you, will it upset you? Well, I always say the truth must be met head on, no pun intended. Your head, young sir, was in 21 pieces. 21 pieces? Edward repeated mindlessly. Lucius Clark nodded. 21, he said. All modesty aside, I must admit that a lesser doll mender, a doll mender without my skills, might not have been able to rescue you. But let's not speak of what might have been. Let us speak of instead what is. You are whole. You have been pulled back from the brink of obliv oblivion by your humbled servant, Lucius Clark. And here, Lucius Clark put his head, hand on his chest and bowed deeply over Edward. This was quite a speech to wake up to, and Edward lay on his back trying to absorb it. He was on a wooden table. He was in a room with sunshine pouring in from high windows. His head, apparently, had been in 21 pieces and now was put back together into one. He was not wearing a red suit. In fact, he had no clothes on at all. He was naked again, and he did not have wings. And then he remembered Bryce, the diner, Neil swinging him through the air. Bryce. You are wondering, perhaps, about your young friend, said Lucius, the one with the continually running nose. Yes, he brought you here weeping, begging for my assistance. Put him together again, he said. Put him back together. I told him, I said, young sir, I am a businessman. I can put your rabbit back together again for a price. The question is, can you pay this price? And he could not. Of course he could not. He said he could not. I told him then that he had two options, only two. The first option being that he seek assistance elsewhere. Option two was that I would fix you to the very best of my considerable abilities, and then you would become mine. His no longer, but mine. Here Lucius fell quiet. He nodded, agreeing with himself. Two options only, he said. <laughs> he nodded, agreeing with himself. Two options only, he said, and your friend chose option two. He gave you up so you could be healed. Extraordinary, really. Bryce, thought Edward. Lucius Clark clapped his hands together. But no worries, my friend, no worries. I fully intend to keep my end of the bargain. I will restore you to what I perceive to be your former glory. You shall have rabbit fur ears and a rabbit fur tail. Your whiskers will be repaired and replaced. Your eyes repainted to bright and stunning blue. You will be clothed in the finest of suits. And then someday I will reap the return on my investment in you. All in good time, all in good time. In the doll business, we have a saying. There is real time and there is a doll time. You, my fine friend, have entered doll time. Right, here's chapter 24's picture. 
see it. And so Edward Tulane was mended, put together again, cleaned and polished, dressed in an elegant suit and placed on a high shelf for display. From this shelf, Edward could see the whole shop, Lucius Clark's workbench and all the windows to the, ins the outside world and the door that customers used to enter and leave. From this shelf, Edward saw Bryce open the door one day and stand in the threshold, the silver harmonica in his left hand, flashing brilliantly in the sunlight, flooding in through the windows. Young sir, said Lucius, I'm afraid that we made a deal. Can't I see him, asked Bryce. He wiped his hand across his nose and the gesture filled Edward with a terrible feeling of love and loss. I just want to look at him. Lucius Clark sighed. You may look, he said. You may look and then you must go and not come back. I cannot have you in my shop every day, mooning over what you have lost. Yes, sir. Picture. Bryce coming back. Lucius nodded again. He got up from his workbench and went to Edward's shelf and picked him up and held him so that Bryce could see him. Hey, Jangles, said Bryce. You look good. The last time I seen you, you looked terrible. Your head was busted in and he is put back together again, said Lucius. I promised you he would be. Bryce nodded. He wiped his hand across his nose. Can I hold him, he asked. No, said Lucius. Bryce nodded again. Tell him goodbye, said Lucius Clark. He is rep repaired. He has been saved. Now you must tell him goodbye. Goodbye, said Bryce. Don't go, thought Edward. I won't be able to bear it if you go. And now you must leave, said Lucius Clark. Yes, sir, said Bryce. But he stood without moving, looking at Edward. Go, said Lucius Clark. Go. Please, thought Edward, don't. Bryce turned. He walked through the door of the doll mender's shop. The door closed. The bell tinkled. And Edward was alone. Chapter 25. Creepy dolls. Technically, of course, he was not alone. Lucius Clark's shop was filled with dolls, lady dolls and baby dolls, dolls with eyes that open and close, and dolls with painted on eyes. Dolls dressed as queens and do dolls wearing sailor suits. Edward had never cared for dolls. He found them annoying and self-centered, twittery and vain. This opinion was immediately reinforced by his first shelf mate, a china doll with green glass eyes and red lips and dark brown hair. She was wearing a green satin dress that fell to her knees. What are you? She said in a high pitched voice when Edward was placed on the shelf next to her. I'm a rabbit, said Edward. The doll let out a small squeak. You're in the wrong place, she said. This is a shop for dolls, not rabbits. Edward said nothing. Shoo, said the doll. I would love to shoo, said Edward, but it is obvious that I cannot. After a long silence, the doll said, I hope you don't think that someone is going to buy you. Again, Edward said nothing. The people who come in here want dolls, not rabbits. They want baby dolls or elegant dolls as such as myself. Dolls with pretty dresses, dolls with eyes that open and close. I have no interest in being purchased, said Edward. The doll gasped. You don't want somebody to buy you, she said. You don't want to be owned by a little girl who loves you. Sarah Ruth, Abilene. Their names went through Edward's head like the notes of a sad, sweet song. I've already been loved, said Edward. I've been loved by a girl named Abilene. I've been loved by a fisherman and his wife and a hobo and his dog. I've been loved by a boy who played a harmonica and a girl who died. Don't talk to me about love, he said. I have known love. This impassioned speech shut up Edward's shelf mate for a considerable amount of time. Well, she said at last, still, my point is that no one is going to buy you. They did not speak to each other again. 
The doll was sold two weeks later to a grandmother who was purchasing her for a grandchild. Yes, she said to Lucius Clark. That one right there, the one with the green dress. She is quite lovely. Yes, said Lucius. She is, isn't she? And he plucked the doll from the shelf. Goodbye and good riddance, thought Edward. The spot next to the rabbit stayed vacant for some time. Day after day, the door to the shop opened and closed, letting in early morning sun or late afternoon light, lifting the hearts of the dolls inside, all of them thinking that when the door swung wide that this time, this time the person entering the shop would be the one who wanted them. Edward was the lone Edward was alone. He prided himself on not hoping, not allowing his heart to lift inside of him. He prided himself on keeping his heart silent, immobile, closed tight. I'm done with hope, thought Edward Tulane. And then one day at dusk, right before the close, right before he closed the shop, Lucius Clark placed another doll on the shelf next to Edward. That is it. That is three. Friends, you may unmute. If you do not have any other questions for me, I'm going to head out. If you guys want to stay and chat with each other. Come on.